Hey everybody, Josh here, and today we're gonna to do a tour of this 2019 Ford Transit Connect camper van. Before we jump inside of this thing, I just wanna point out that down below, there'll be a bunch of links to the products that you're gonna see throughout this tour. You'll also find my website, briarwoodvans.com. There you can find my contact information, pricing, build plans, all that good stuff. So be sure to check that out. I'll quit rambling and we'll jump into the tour. So up top, you'll see the solar panel. This is a 200 watt panel and that is sitting right in front of the max air fan this particular model has both intake and exhaust features and again will be linked down in the description so moving down here on the driver's side you'll see a window is installed this one can be opened it has a screen to try to keep some bugs out and over here on the passenger side you'll see a bigger window now this van came as a cargo van so this was just a panel we had the panel removed and replaced with some factory glass so this slider door is what we're going to call the front door if we pop that open you can get a good look at what's going on on the inside first thing we will cover is this upper storage cabinet the transit connect is a little unique compared to other smaller vans because it uses these rails uh, for the slider doors to run along so it's a little bit of a unique shape going on up here but this door just tips down 180 degrees and then it gives you access to a big storage cabinet there's quite a bit of storage up there um, just trying to make use of some of that extra sort of dead space sitting above the front seats close that back up move down here to the next storage bin we'll pop this cushion out of the way and we'll flip this up and that'll reveal a big storage bin you can actually see one of the batteries which we'll cover here a little bit later on you get a pretty good amount of storage space next to the battery here and this cabinet was actually designed sort of to be, I don't know, expandable. If you ever want to add additional batteries, you can sort of give up your storage space and add more of these little 100 amp hour batteries. For the cushion here, some double-sided Velcro could be added to maybe try to keep that in place. So it kind of opens as one piece. Otherwise, just tossing it aside, you can access the inside of the storage bin. And then over on this side, you'll notice there's a fridge stored on this end of the cabinet. If I unlock the drawer, you can slide that fridge out. And then it's hinged on the back so that it opens, you know, when you're sitting inside the van. But it's still easy to access uh, if you're standing outside. You can pop the lid open, grab what you need, and then close it up. And you're good to go. You can toss that lock back on just to, you know, when you're driving, to try to prevent that from hanging into this cabinet and then below all of that i was actually able to sneak in some drawers inside of the subfloor these i think are about 24 inches in depth um, and i say these because there's a mirroring one on the other side of the van over on the driver's side they're kind of shallow but just another little extra place to stuff all the goodies now i'll move around to the back of the van and we'll pop those doors open so right away here, all the factory panels were just replaced with some nicer plywood that was painted to match the walls. And then was able to sneak a tiny little cubby inside of this door just for all the little goodies and knickknacks. But you can see that green color kind of throughout the van here on the driver's side wall, as well as the passenger side wall. So if we start over here and swing this door open, it's gonna reveal our freshwater tank, as well as some of the plumbing components for the faucet and the sink. This van only features one tank for fresh water, and then it has a discharge hose for the sort of gray water. This is around a five gallon tank. I've definitely become a fan of these tanks, uh, mainly because they have two caps. Um, just giving an option to maybe fill this tank in place um, without having to disconnect the hose. So if you bring your water source here, you can just screw this cap off, fill the tank, good to go. Otherwise, the hose is on a quick disconnect, so you can just pop it off and take the tank to the water source and fill it up that way. And that just slides back in place. Door swing shut. And then moving up here, you'll see we have a sort of brass faucet with the little gooseneck. The nice thing about the faucet being located in this position is that it can also double as sort of like an outdoor shower. 
Um, there's a magnetic clip here. If you position this on the outside of the van, you can grab the faucet, pull the gooseneck out, hook it up and set it up as a little way to rinse off outside of the van. And then you'll notice a pretty good sized sink, at least for this size of a van. Um, I believe it's around 12 or so inches this way, maybe like 14-ish this way. Again, there'll be a link in the description for the exact measurements. There was also a little butcher block sort of like a plug that was cut to fill in this opening, just giving you a little bit more counter space. You can also double as a cutting board. All the butcher block was finished uh, with a food safe oil. Moving along here inside of this skinny little cabinet, uh, you'll see storage for that sink plug, as well as a panel here for converting this first drawer up here into a desk. So this drawer doubles as both storage as well as either a desk or just additional counter space. Below that is just one more storage drawer. Um, there's actually two little sort of low wattage space heaters in here and those will plug in to the various outlets throughout the van. We'll touch a little bit more on that later. They're ran through an inverter, but again, just general storage here. And then below that is the side of that fridge that you saw earlier. And then up top here on the left side of the countertop is actually an induction cooktop. Above that is the on-off for the ceiling LED lights. All the LED lights in this van are dimmable. These are nice little low profile, uh, touch sensitive on-off switches. You'll see your standard household outlets here, uh, a couple USB ports and a 12 volt accessory plug. And up above all of that is one more little upper storage cabinet, pretty small, but was able to sneak this in here. And it also features some under cabinet LED lighting with uh, another one of those touch sensitive dimmer switches. Now I'll crawl out of here and we'll go over the other side of the van. Of course, on this side, you'll notice the bed the slide out bed features 500 pound drawer slides that support the extension. When you slide that out, you can grab the backrest, pop that into place, and that'll give you your full uh, sleeping area, which comes to about 32 inches uh, across side to side. And then for length from the back here to the front of this cushion is around 76 inches. And then for height off the floor, we're in the 14 to 15 inch range. Of course, when these cushions are sat on, they compress a little bit, but to give you some idea for perspective, below that slide out part of the bed are just three uh, general storage drawers. And those are all on soft closed drawer slides. These are great because they provide a little bit of resistance when you try to open them. And that helps keep these closed when you're driving down the road. I do actually offer plans. Uh, if you're looking to build this slide out bed for yourself, um, the plans will show you how to build the cabinet, the slide out section, as well as the storage drawers below. There'll be a link down in the description if that's uh, something you're interested in. And I even offer these little leather handles if you're looking to pick those up too. Leather handles are just nice in small spaces because they're soft. So if you bump into them, you're not going to hurt yourself. And they also work as a good little bumper for these smaller vans because cabinets tend to bump into each other a little bit and they help uh, prevent scuffing and scratching. If I tip down this backrest here, it'll reveal a little cubby. I was able to sneak into this uh, wall here, providing a little bit extra storage. Up on top of that, a little more of that butcher block, trying to keep the theme throughout the van. Moving up, you'll see another 12 volt outlet, and then a small little cubby tucked into this wall with uh, a little dowel to try to prevent anything setting there from tipping out and it actually has some LEDs wired in so that you can have a little accent lighting. Again, using one of those uh, dimmer switches. Of course, you'll see another household outlet here. And then this is actually the on off for the inverter that we'll get to here in just a second. And up above all of that is the ceiling. Uh, it's using some tongue and groove. It was treated with some oil to try to get it a closer tone to the butcher block. And then the bottom side of that max air fan I mentioned earlier, as well as those ceiling lights. From right here, you can see the curtains that are installed. They're all blackout curtains in this van. Um, those ones are there to separate the sort of the cab from 
the back of the van. There are also curtains installed on the slider doors to help provide a little bit more privacy. Now we'll move over to that driver's side slider and we'll go through the electrical system. So popping this door open, it's gonna reveal the electrical system. So up here, we all have our charge controller that goes along with those solar panels. And then this van has a DC to DC charger, which allows you to charge your batteries when you're driving down the road. Sort of the fuse box we got going on over here. A couple other various fuses. This particular van has a 2000 watt inverter. And again, all these components will be listed down in the description. To the left of that is sort of the main kill switch to disconnect the batteries from the electrical system. And then there's just a little battery monitor installed above that. Now this van runs off two 100 amp hour batteries and those are stored in this cabinet that's underneath the main base cushion. So if I slide these cushions out of the way, it's gonna reveal the other end or side of this sort of front cabinet here. And this is actually a panel that just pops out and that's gonna reveal those two 100 amp hour batteries. This system is wired in parallel, which is giving you 200 amp hours of battery life. But like I mentioned, you can extend that by giving up some of the storage space over here and adding more of these 100 amp hour batteries. The cool thing about these batteries is they have actually a self heating feature. So without getting too into the, I don't know, nitty gritty details, uh, lithium batteries don't really love charging in colder temperatures. So these batteries actually have little heaters inside that will turn on when the cells get too cold and then it'll heat them back up. And once they get to a certain temperature, then the batteries will allow charging to come through. Those heaters kick off and you're good to go. Pop this panel back in place. Slide the cushion back. So that pretty much wraps up the electrical system here. And again, on this side, you'll see another one of those drawers that's built into that subfloor, giving you a little bit of extra storage. Well, I think that's gonna do it for this tour. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. If I did, just leave me a comment and I'll try to get back to as many people as I can. And without sounding like a broken record, there will be links to a bunch of those products that you saw throughout the tour. Uh, link down in the description, as well as my website. There you can find my contact information, pricing, build plans, and all that good stuff. I appreciate you taking the time to check out this tour, and I'll see you in the next one.